morning, everybody. My name's Debbie. Um, I work for Discovery in the supported employment team. And today I'm just going to give you a presentation of an outline of how we work uh, and what we're, we can offer. So I'm just going to get started. So what do we do? We actually work with alongside the employers. So we try to get to know a person when they refer to us. So we get to know what they like, what they don't like, what the what they're good at, perhaps what they're not so good at, what we need to look at and help them and give them some support with. And then we agree a plan together, which hopefully leads to getting the right job. But with the employer, we get to know them as well and we understand their needs um, so that we make sure that we're getting the right worker. Uh, and then we can arrange the right support, which in turn, as you can see, it's a double pronged effort and hopefully will then develop a career for the person that was referred to us. So our vision and values is. We work in the Somerset um, area and our vision is for people with learning disabilities and their family to have more control over their services. Make more day to day choices. Live in high quality and fit for purpose buildings. Have the same opportunities as everybody else. Receive a service that is good value for money. Everyone has the right to employment and support people gain meaningful, sustainable employment. So that as a company is our vision because we also have outreach and we have supported um, independent living services as well. So that's the company as a whole. And our values are ambition. We seek to help people to reach to their potential. Courage, we're guided by the courage of our convictions to make a difference. Integrity, so we ensure that what we do is grounded in what we believe. Partnership, we work with others to achieve more for people. Respect, we show people respect and recognise that their unique contribution adds value to us all. So again, that's as a company and we're part of that uh, company as supported employment. So what is supported employment? So we've been successfully used for decades as a model for supporting people with learning disabilities and autism and or autism, I should say, to secure and retain paid employment. The terms and conditions for people with disabilities should be the same as for everyone else, which should be include pay, benefits, safe working conditions and opportunities for career advancement, if that's what they would like. So the model is, like I say, we have an initial meeting uh, where we engage with people and this is to find out if they actually do want um, work because not everybody does um, and it's because obviously it's harder to work with somebody if that, that's not what they're looking for. We then go on to the vocational profiling, which is where we get, like I say, we get to know people, we get to know their circle of support um, that gives us a bigger picture of people. Um, and it's quite interesting because sometimes people don't realise what they're actually good at or what they like until you actually have those conversations with them. And then we employ, we do employer engagement. Like I say, we treat them as a customer just as much as the people that get referred to us. And then we would job match. So it's the right person in the right job. We can then do in work support until the person gets to know the job. And then we could help them look at the career developments if that's what they would like to do. And this model has its heart, the belief that paid employment is a positive, possible and achievable for everyone. So, like I say, vocational profiling, it's how we find out about the people that's being referred to us. Um, like I said, not what do you like? What don't you like? What's your expectations of work? What skills and abilities you have and could be what hours that you're looking for. And then with the employer engagement, we're already in communication with employers to find out what jobs and work placements are available. But we're continually trying to broaden our um, offer by engaging with more and more employers. And so how um, 
these can match up with people's skills? Um, do we need to consider any reasonable adjustments? So it could be a different end time to avoid the rush hours or carving specific duties with a larger job description. So we could perhaps take like we had somebody who does data inputting because he really enjoys that. So and other people didn't particularly like doing that job, so we could carve that specific job for this person. Uh, we understand the rules completely and complete a task analysis, analysis <laughs> and start planning training programmes, which is bespoke to the trainee. Job matching, we then match the best person to the jobs on offer within the traineeship or what the employer is looking for. We can then do in-work support, so we attend the work placement and can train individuals within the role. We identify natural support systems and build mentors and networks for the individual to ensure phase support is in place for when we pull back. And then we help with the career development by continuing to support with a three month, a six month and then a 12 month review to ensure that the trainee and the employee is or the employee is getting the most out of their job and helping them to follow their aspirations. So some of the staff training we could do is in-house training, which is training for the whole team. Um, the core values of supported employment and the procedures, paperwork and required standards. So we can go in, we can do various training courses uh, such as reasonable adjustments, disability awareness, really whatever the employee would like, we can do that for the whole um, um, placement where they're going to be going. Um, we can also do training in systematic instruction, which is known as TSI. Um, all staff who work in supported employment are trained in this, which is an approach which aims to provide organisations with the skills and knowledge required to provide one on one support for people with disabilities who require assistance to learn the skills associated with work and independent living. The workshop draws upon the work of a Dr Mark Gold and a Dr Wolf Wolfersberg, uh, two of the main pioneers of supported employment in the early 1980s. And this approach has long been considered a core requirement for job coaches practicing in supported employment and is gaining recognition as a way of helping people to learn daily living skills. So I don't know if you can see this picture here. Um, we're all trained in teaching somebody how to do this lever. It's all very technical with lots of cogs and things. Um, and we do it in such a way that the person can learn it themselves rather than us having to teach them and talk them through it every time. It's really quite interesting to see that being done. We're, we've all got a level three certificate for supported employment practitioners. Um, and it's the first and only recognised qualification for the supported employment sector. It's a larger qualification which covers the full range of functions expected of a supported employer practitioner, along with the underpinning values of the sector. So the sector is BASE, which is the British Association of Supported Employments. We all do the qualification through them and their national so dream jobs, I don't have that link to that, but we do have some examples. So this is Ryan, who Ryan was 33 years old, learning disability and lives in the Glastonbury area. So in, nine, uh, in 2019, he was taking part in an, an employability training course called Stepping Stones which was at the Beckery Day Centre in Glastonbury, which was a day service run by Discovery, where he met Mel Horsfield, who was a supported employment coordinator for the service. And while she was having a chat with him, he said that he'd always liked the idea of working, but he was just going to the day um, services. 
Um, so then he was referred to Discovery um, to help him achieve his goal. So Ryan has helped with the gardening at the Beckery Centre. So he had got a little bit of experience of working and Mel set up work placements with local retailers so he could gain more experience. Uh, one work placement was at a hardware store, but the store closed down temporarily in March 2020 when we went into lockdown. But Ryan didn't want to give up the hope of gaining paid employment, so he worked with Mel and they kept job searching. And then they noticed there was a cleaning job at the NHS Ambulance Centre in Glastonbury. So Mel knew from getting to know Ryan and his support needs that he needed an adapted way of applying for the job vacancy. So she actually got in touch with Churchill Cleaning Services um, and spoke to them about Ryan and explained about the free employment service that we can provide um, to help them recruit and retain adults with autism and learning disabilities and learning needs. And she suggested that perhaps Ryan could do a work trial. Um, so like a working interview. So with Mel's support, he can show the employee that his ability, uh, sorry, the employer, his ability to be able to do the job. Luckily, the employer did agreed and Ryan completed a month's work trial. On his first day, Ryan and Mel met with the employer who showed them the cleaning tasks and Mel helped Ryan to learn his new work routine, to follow the cleaning procedures safely and to get to know his colleagues. During the month trial, Mel reduced her support so Ryan became independent at the end in his workplace. And Ryan's still actually there. Um, the employer gave him a permanent role as a cleaner of the ambulance centre. And he worked all through the lockdown period and we still keep in contact with him. Ryan really loves his job and he loves working with the colleagues and having a cup of tea with them. Um, he was interviewed by BBC Somerset Radio and Somerset Live, which obviously he was thrilled with. And the employer has said they're so impressed with Discovery's employment services, they'll contact us with any future vacancies. So that's a real success story. And I know, like I say, he really enjoys chatting with his colleagues. Then we have Matt, who worked in the Discovery Supported Employment Team for several years. Uh, again, Mel, good old Mel, had a clear idea of the vocational profile stage that Matt needed to work at his own pace to change his daily day service and introduce different work trials. Matt had, Matt had work experience with Wells Food Bank and volunteered at Paddington Farm in Glastonbury. In February 2020, Matt went to visit Orchard Vale Trust in Wookie and they've set up something called Style Gardening, which is a 12th session gardening programme. Matt decided he would like to start the course and if successful, this could lead to actual paid work with the group at Orchard Vale Trust. So the sessions became sporadic during the lockdown, but Matt was determined and he was dedicated and he completed the course and he now is in paid employment with them and he couldn't be happier. He again, he loves it. He loves the opportunities um, and he's always learning new skills and he does this independently. It's brilliant actually to see. So there was also a team supporting the old farmhouse. Um, teaching, supporting a man with complex learning disabilities and health needs, which resulted in hospital admission. And the person we support, which was Jordan, was coached by the supported employment team to help him secure his job as a mechanic, which they did. And, and we also supported Cameron, who's been working in Kitchen in the Pantry, which is a community venture in Bridgewater. So it's quite a lot of support 
And these are some of the people that we've enga already engaged with. So NHS, Marks and Spences, Home Bargains, Wing Canton, b and Morrison's, The Range, Butlins, Musgrove Hospital, McDonald's, Travis Perkis, Asda, but they're just a few. And we do also do some smaller employers as well. So see if this will play. No, sorry about that. <laughs> I do think I might have problems. I've got to try and get back on two teams. Bear with me, sorry. So we have a database that we have our employer engagement. We have part, what we call partnership agreements. And this doesn't cost the employer, the employer anything. Uh, like I say, we can offer training for the employer. Um, all we ask is that they inform us of any vacancies that they have so we can be aware that they've got vacancies. Um, we can account manage the process so we can tell them every step of the way that we are with people. We try to target new businesses and build lasting relationships. Um, and we use vacancies to build future vacancies. So we do go on Indeed and things like that to see who's advertising any job vacancies. So we've got a traineeship at Hinkley Point C, which I'm sure most people have heard of. So we work with EDF Energy um, because they're able to supply us with a safe environment on site to learn and develop skills before connecting to employers. This is called the hub and the hub is a fantastic space for the trainees to feel safe and supported. It's a valuable resource as HPC site is overwhelming at support at times because it's huge, it's absolutely huge. And especially at the beginning, it can be a bit scary. So it allows the trainees to take this in the site in at a slower pace at their space. And Chris, Cora, Sophie and Leone were all very supportive and listened and helped our trainees each day that they went. So when it started, we had six interns and they did some travel training, which with the help of Somerset Passenger Solutions, they were able to catch buses. Um, they had onboarding. Um, they had to do the CITB which is an operative test, but they could do that with support. Um, the people, the supported employment team that were there helped to job match where there was some, some opportunities and they also gave in-work support. So we'll just talk about Finn. So he's 20 years old and he's been a, had a diagnosis of SOTOS-like Sotos syndrome and experiences associated difficulties, for example, poor concentration, word finding problems, problems with short term memory, behavioural difficulties, including ritualistic behaviours and social difficulties. So Finn had he'd taken lots of volunteering roles before, uh, before being referred to the traineeship, but none of them had led to paid employment. And both Finn and his family were becoming very frustrated with the lack of outcomes, despite his hard work ethic. And Finn did work really well in his role as store man, picking orders, loading orders, along with completing relevant paperwork. And he's been working on deliveries and using the internal computer system to process the paperwork to completion. Finn had to be on site ready for work at seven o'clock in the morning which meant he had to leave home two, two hours prior due to the, how long it took him to get to the site. And due to all his hard work, he was successful at interview and gained a 40 hour full time position with Byler earning £10.27 sorry, £10 per hour. And Finn's quote was, I really enjoyed the programme and I love my job. We go for breakfast every morning. And then Steve's quote, Boiler's manager, Finn is a hard worker 
and has really changed and improved our team's dynamics. And then Miranda's crow, who's Finn's mum. It is great to see a happy and independent Finn. This has made a huge difference to our family life. So I have got this one. We can play this one. Bear with me. Got everything open except for all that I wanted. So. We don't seem to have any sound, uh, Debbie. Oh. Sorry. Escape. Oh, I know what I've done. I think when I've gone on to share. I need to do. That's it. Sorry about that. Can you hear it now? No, we, we've lost your sharing now. We can't, we can only see you on the screen. We can't see your computer. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Are we back on? Yeah, you're sharing again now. Sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. And what that means is a plan that's designed where the individual we support is at the centre of their support. We also provide support around supported employment. So people who are looking for opportunities to develop work-based skills, so we will help them find a job and support them there. The support I got from Discover and Sharon was really good. Going through traineeship. He developed into the team, the team welcomed him. Our management team then decided, had a conversation with him that they found a position for Finn and offered him a job. Oh, it was a bit harder to start, getting to know where everything is and getting to know everyone. But I enjoyed it for four weeks on experience. If I didn't go with Discovery, I wouldn't have got this job. Finn now works full time with us, but uh, yeah, he's settling in really well. Working with Discovery has actually proved really useful for us. Having, having found Liam, um, who's been a breath of fresh air uh, to us, um, mainly because he, he, he loves his job. Discovery put me on the training course. I started off doing a work experience, and then I got the full-time job. I mean, he's been here for eight, eight months now. We'd never be without him. He gets on really well with everybody. He's easy going, and he fits in perfectly. I get along really well. We have a laugh, and I just get along with my, all my friends. They're, they're very friendly and they help me learn new stuff every day. Yeah, it's given me a lot of confidence. I love this job so much. I'm happy to come to work every day. I'm coming back to teams. So let me get back to um, So this is the spotted employment team or some of them. We have got some new people starting. So we're growing all the time because there's such a need for people. Um, 
So the vision is employment is positive and possible for all. The vision for supported employment is that it becomes an integrated part of the quality service that Discovery already provides to approximately 900 people and families throughout Somerset. That we raise ambitions and achieve employment aspirations for all of the people we support by having a varied employment offer that means the need that meets the needs of everyone. Supportive employment will be a service that can be accessed by people of all ages to help them to find and, and secure paid sustained employment, which is what we want. It's not just about ticking boxes. Um, if you'd like, I'll just play you another um, video, which is a more up to date Hinkley point that's happening at the moment. So the HPC traineeship programme is for uh, adults age 18 to 24 who have a special education need or an EHCP looking for a route way to employment. It's a 10 week course that gives people the experience and the opportunities and the access to the employers at Hinkley Point C. I like this job because I don't know what I'll be doing. I mean, if I didn't have this job, I don't know what I'll be doing. So coming to work, I mean, enjoying coming to work. I'm really happy that I do that. I do really like this job. I like the team, I like everyone, I like everyone here. So I did an internship over at Hickley Point. I did all the training and the guidance that I have on my job coach. And, and, and because of that, I, I had the job here. Well, once I left school, I was doing a bit a lot of volunteer work for a while, for a while and uh, well, I need, well, I wasn't the best academically, so I needed some help getting, getting employment. So I was, uh, so this pro, so the program for the apprenticeship was brought to my attention. And I decided, well, if nothing else, it would, it would help get at least give some work experience under my belt. So I'm a catering assistant, so I that I do like the lunch services. So like, like serving and dipping their lunch and doing all the coffees at the coffee shop. So I feel a bit of being part of the team uh, means that everyone who, um, if, if I'm struggling or, or if I need help, I can go to them. Every little thing that's been that's done, done on a building site, especially one as big as this, is recorded. More specifically, forms have to be filled in. And, all, and it's the job of me and people like me to organise those folders into some resemblance of order. And also to, sc to uh, scan them onto a computer so there's both, both a digital and a hard copy. My job is a kitchen porter. I wash up the pots, pans, um, wash the floors, uh, wash the plates, wash the cutlery. So there are three different partners. We've got Discovery Supported Employment delivering job coaching. We've got Bridgewater and Taunton College delivering the education. And then we've got EDF, who are the host business, delivering the opportunities for young people. With all those support businesses, we're going to really help the young people get these skills and develop their skills to be successful within the roles. So I felt uh, really happy that I had the job and I went to my parents and said that I got, I got the job as well and they were like over the moon. My mum was a big help, help during it so she was proud of me. My, da I, my dad was also proud of me. And he, he vocalised that as he vocalises everything that like, excites him very loudly. Yeah, they feel chuffed for me. They were like really happy when I got this job. They were like, when I told them on the first day I got this job, they were like, oh my God. They were like, it's so, I'm so, we're so proud of you that we are. Uh, you could be, and they said, you've come a long way, Liam, come a long way. I reckon uh, with all the help and the training that I had from my job coach, I would definitely recommend, recommend this the people with or without a disability can get a job. Yeah, they get, yeah, they, yeah, they give great support. I mean, I mean, obviously, I need, obviously, I need, I need to know what, I, what I'm doing, so they give me tasks to do. So, and if I don't don't know exactly what I'm doing, and as it often as sometimes it confuses me, I can always rely on them to help me. If you get offered this job, 100% take it because you're never going to get a job like this anywhere else. Like this, there's just the atmosphere is good, the team is really nice. Like if I was you, I would take it. So we have lots of um, good news stories that have come from this and really changed people's lives. 
So if you're 18 to 24 and you have an EHCP or a special education need, you need to get in touch because we have opportunities for you in the local area. Right, 